Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Alyssa. We are getting ready to start our fifth building leaders today. Can you believe it? We've been out of school away from each other for five building leaders lessons. Miss Alyssa's hair is kind of crazy today. I was outside and I didn't fix it because I know that you think it's super funny when Miss Alyssa has crazy hair. Okay, so building leaders number five. First things first, we're going to do the wildly important goals. So let's go through all Miss Alyssa's wildly important goals this year. The first wildly important goal, our first wig, was to learn all of your names, which I did because you guys helped me. <clears throat> my, second, my second wig was to put away all my clothes in the laundry basket, which I did. Um... My third wildly important goal was to reorganize and clean a room in my house. And it's the room that I'm in right now, which I love. Do you see this picture back here on the wall? Isn't that pretty? My grandpa made that picture and that light right there, me and my dad made together. I've been very busy the last few weeks. Okay, my fourth wildly important goal was to do a kindness mission and I baked cookies, which were unicorns and rainbows, and I decorated them with sprinkles and sugar and I delivered them to family and friends. My fifth wildly important goal was to start reading a book, which I've done and I've already finished three chapters of that book. And then last week we talked about putting first things first. And so I had a list of things that I was going to work on. <clears throat> I was going to do the important things first, and then I was going to do the fun things. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Next, we're going to talk about the seven habits of happy kids. <clears throat> it's important to review because when we review, that means we keep it fresh in our mind, right? If we stop talking about the seven habits of happy kids, then we're going to forget about them. And then maybe we won't be happy. So habit number one is be proactive. That means I'm in charge of me. I'm in charge of myself. I'm in charge of my attitude. I'm in charge of my actions. Um, habit number two, begin with the end in mind. <clears throat> begin with the end in mind. Stop and think, right? We should always stop and think before we do something. That way we know, we can think about, is this what a leader would do? And if the answer is no, a leader would not do that, then we don't do it, right? <clears throat> the other thing we can do when we begin with the end in mind is we can make a plan so we can be successful. Habit number three is put first things first. That's what we worked on last week. Get your important things done first, and then you have lots of time to do the fun things. Habit number four is think win-win. Find a way for everybody to win. I hope that you're doing that at home. Habit number five, seek first to understand and then to be understood. That means that we listen with our eyes, our ears, and our hearts, right? We don't just talk and talk and talk and talk, but we stop and we listen. We listen with our eyes by looking at the person. We listen with our ears by hearing what they say, but we also care about the person who's speaking and um, we show them that and that's how we listen with our heart. So if mom and dad, mom or dad ask you to do something, you should stop what you're doing, not keep playing, but you should stop what you're doing and you should look at them, right? And then as soon as they tell us what they want us to do, then we do it. That shows them that we care about them. Habit number six is synergize. Work together with your family and your friends because you can get things done quicker and have a lot more fun. <clears throat> and habit number seven is sharpen the saw. And we sharpen the saw by taking care of our minds, by growing them and making them smarter. Um, we sharpen the saw by taking care of our bodies, by getting a lot of sleep and eating healthy. And we sharpen the saw by our taking care of our heart, doing kind things, right? 
Miss Alyssa's proactive happy list. I think about this every time I miss you. I added something to my list this time. So the things that make me happy when I start to feel sad and I start to miss Dub West Noble Primary and I start to miss you guys, then I stop and I think about all the things that make me feel happy because that's how I can be proactive when, when, when I'm starting to feel sad. So the first thing on Miss Alyssa's proactive happy list is my little leaders. You guys all make me feel so happy. The second thing on my proactive happy list is West Noble Primary because most West Noble Primary makes me feel happy. I remember all the fun things that we did together this year. The third thing on my happy list is the seven habits of happy kids, because I know that if you are thinking about them and practicing them, you are all going to be super happy kids. The fourth thing on my proactive happy list is sharpening the saw and spreading kindness. I love to spread kindness. I love when, when I make other people smile. The fifth thing on my list is my silly little dog, Beckham. And the sixth thing on my list this, this week is my mom. And we're going to talk about, um, at the end of the lesson, why Miss Alyssa put her mom on the proactive happy list. Okay, so last week, I challenged you to put first things first. And I wanted you to think of some things that you could do or that you needed to do first you needed to do first some of the important things you needed to do before you did the fun things so the first thing <clears throat> that i told you i was going to work on this week is i was going to make my bed before i painted my nails which i made my bed and i painted my nails a new color aren't those fun i've been doing it every week and that is something else that makes me happy so it was important for me to make my bed first before I did something fun, which was painting my nails. The second thing I promised you I would work on is I said I would wash the dishes before I watched TV because it's important to do our work first and then do the things that we like to do, right? And I did that this week. And then the third thing on my put first things first list was to feed Beckham. And so it says, Miss Alyssa fed Beckham before I ate my own food every single day because it's important to take care of the people that we love, right? So I hope that you were very successful at putting first things first this week. All right, I am going to read you my most favorite book today. And I know that I say that a lot because Miss Alyssa has a lot of books that I love, right? But this one I think really is my favorite other than our Seven Habits of Happy Kids book. This book is called One. Last week we read the book Zero, and this week we're going to read the book One. Blue was a quiet color. So when I think about this book, I think about all of you and how you're all different. And you're going to see in our story that all of the colors are different, just like all of you are different. So blue was a quiet color. That makes me think that blue was shy. He enjoyed to look up at the sky, floating on the waves, and on days he felt daring, splashing in rain puddles. Every once in a while, he wished he could be more sunny like yellow. So to me, that makes me think that if yellow is sunny, it means happy. And sometimes Blue wished he could be more bright like green. And when I think of that, I think that bright must mean smart. Sometimes he thought he was more regal. He, or he wished he could be more regal like purple. That means fancy or outgoing like orange. Outgoing means you have lots and lots of friends. But overall, blue liked being blue. So when I read that page, I think about how everybody's different. And I think about how sometimes I look at my friends and I think, oh, I wish that I was a little more happy or I wish that I was a little more smart. That doesn't mean that I'm saying that I wish I was someone else. That just means that I'm setting goals and I'm thinking, you know, I could probably work a little harder at, at 
my at my getting my brain smarter or i could work a little bit harder at being fancy or having more friends okay so all of that all, so blue is just saying that even though he knows he's different than other people and he knows that there's things that he can work on and be better at he really likes being who he is and that's a really good thing but then at the very bottom of the page it says except when he's with red so blues all blues other friends make him feel good about himself but when he's with red he wishes that he was not blue boys and girls is that a good thing no that's not a good thing because miss Alyssa wants you to love who you are because there's only one you so if you're not going to be you who else is going to be you let's see why blue doesn't like to be around red red is a hothead he likes to pick on blue red is a great color he would say red is hot and blue is not and when red said those things to blue it would make him feel bad about being blue sometimes yellow would comfort blue blue is a very nice color she would say but yellow never said that in front of red she never said stop picking on blue so boys and girls even though yellow said some nice things to blue do you think that blue felt good about being at that at, at this school with the other colors if every time red would come around yellow would run away and she would leave blue all by himself i think that would make blue feel really sad and really scared so even though yellow's being kind, she's not really being a leader, is she? Green, purple, and orange thought blue was really nice too, but they would never stand up to red either. They never told red to stop. They would all run away and leave blue all by himself. So boys and girls, has anybody been a good leader in our story yet? Not really. Is anybody being um proactive not really how about is anybody in our story synergizing no because they all run away every time red said something mean and no one spoke up he would get bigger and bigger and bigger Soon, Red grew so big that everyone in the whole school of colors was afraid of him. No one dared stop him. And Red started to pick on all of the colors. Boys and girls, this is the worst part of the whole book. Because who's the leader at this school? Who's the one that everybody listens to? Is it a good leader or is it a bad leader? It's a bad leader, isn't it? Red is the one that's bossing everybody around and Red is the one who everybody's listening to. So do you think that at this school full of colors, there's proactive kids and happy kids? Mm, I don't think so. Because so far, none of them are following our habits. None of them are being proactive. None of them are beginning with the end in mind. None of them are putting first things first. They certainly are not thinking win-win. And even though some of the colors are trying to seek first to understand, they were trying to understand that Blue was feeling sad. They, weren't, they, they still weren't being good leaders because they would run away and they would leave him. When, when it really mattered, when he needed his friends. They weren't synergizing and they definitely aren't sharpening the saw. So on the other page, do you see all the colors? They're flat. And it says when, when red was super mean to them and bossed everybody around, everybody would feel a little blue. It's like their happiness drained right out of them. They're not circles anymore, they're just flat. Until one day, one came. So now there's a new kid at the School of Colors. 
He had a different shape with bold strokes and squared corners. So to me, when I see his shape, compared to the other color blobs, he looks brave and strong. He was really funny and he made the other colors laugh. Red saw this and got very, very hot. Red got jealous because he saw that the other colors were starting to listen to and follow a different leader. Stop laughing, he told Yellow. Stop laughing, he told Green. Stop laughing, he told Purple and Orange. And you know what? Because all of those colors were so used to following a bad leader, as soon as he told them to stop smiling and having fun, they did. Red rolled up to one. Stop laughing, he told him. But one stood up straight like an arrow and said, no. Red was mad, but one would not budge. So Red rolled away. Boys and girls, is it okay to say no? If somebody's being mean and is telling you to do something that you don't want to do, is it okay for you to say no? Yeah, that's okay. And and one didn't say anything mean to Red. He just said, no, I'm not going to follow you when you're being a bad leader. <clears throat> one turned to the other colors and said, if someone is mean and picks on me, I for one stand up and say no. Then Yellow felt brave and said, me too. I want to do that too. I want to be a good leader. And green agreed and said, me three. Then purple became four and orange became five. All of a sudden, the colors said, wait a minute. Why are we being sad every single day? We need to start following the seven habits. And we need to start being proactive, just like one. We need to start beginning with the end in mind, like two. We need to start putting first things first, like three. We need to start thinking win-win, like four. And we need to start seeking first to understand, like five. And now all of the colors that were just blobs have become one of our habits. And they look brave and strong. Blue saw the other colors changing and he wanted to count too. He saw all the other habits being good leaders or all the other numbers becoming habits and being good leaders. And he wanted to do that too. Red grew very red hot. He felt left out. He grew hotter and hotter and hotter. What do you think's gonna happen? Red raced over to blue and said what he always did. Red is hot and blue is not. But this time, blue stood up tall and became six. Red can be really hot, he said, but blue can be super cool. Boys and girls, did, did blue do anything wrong? No. Did he say anything mean? No. He just said, I don't want to follow a bad leader anymore. I'm tired of feeling sad every single day. So it's time that I stand up and do the right thing. Red, blue, a fuse. That means red was so mad that he tried to roll over blue. Uh-oh. But boys and girls, what is our habit number six? Habit number six is synergize, right? Let's see what happens next. But everyone took a stand and stood up with six and said, no, you're not gonna hurt our friend. Boys and girls, are our color habits, are they, are they synergizing? They are, aren't they? Seeing them stand so tall made Red feel very, very, very small. So now Red feels super sad. Then Red turned even redder and began to roll away. Blue called out, can red be hot and blue be cool, he asked. So now do you see the question mark above red's head? He has, he has some thinking to do, doesn't he? Red stopped in his tracks and he thought, 
Hmm. Do I want to stay at this color school and be sad? Or do I want to join the other habits and be a good leader and have fun and be happy at the school? Red can count too, said one. Red rocked and rolled and turned into seven. So Red decided to sharpen the saw and to sharpen her mind, to sharpen her body, and to sharpen her heart. Everyone counts, they shouted. Then Red laughed and joined the fun. Sometimes it just takes one. Boys and girls, I love this book because it's not even a habit book, but it still talks about our habits, doesn't it? We still see all seven of our habits and how important each one is for us to be happy. But it all starts with you, doesn't it? We talk about that during our Building Leaders lessons. It all starts with habit number one, which is something I have to do. I have to choose my attitude and I have to choose what's right and wrong and what I'm going to do. If somebody else, if one of my friends is doing the wrong thing, I have to be brave enough to say, nope, that's not the right thing to do. I need to be proactive and I need to be a leader. So what habits did you see? Obviously, we saw all of them, right? Because all of our seven habits, all of the seven numbers were in our story. So we saw be proactive. We saw begin with the end in mind. We saw put first things first. We saw think win-win. We saw seek first to understand and then to be understood. We saw synergize and we saw sharpen the saw. So I told you, that one of the things that makes Miss Alyssa so happy is my mom. And on Sunday, it's Mother's Day. So my, my little leader challenge this week is to do something kind for Mother's Day. You can do something kind for your mom. You can do something kind for somebody else's mom. You could do something kind for your grandma or your aunt, okay? So let's begin with the end in mind. Let's stop and think and make a plan. What are some kind things you could do for a mom this week? Hmm. Miss Alyssa gave my mom a flower. So maybe you could pick some flowers and give them to your mom or another mom this week. Hmm. What's something else you could do? Maybe you could make them a card or color them a picture, but we're going to work on sharpening the saw this week again. And I want you to do something kind for Mother's Day on Sunday, okay? All right, that's it for our fifth building leaders lesson. I love you so much and I miss you so much. I want you to have a great day today. I want you to have a great weekend. I want you to do something super kind on Mother's Day on Sunday. And I want you to remember to do, use your seven habits all week until I see you again. Okay? All right. I will see you next week. Bye, boys and girls.